Hi friends, greetings from Dr. M. Rao. In this video, I wish to share some of my experiences of lab to land exercise. In the previous video, I have discussed in detail what is the land to lab exercise which forms a part of their training for the growers wherein they will come to the laboratory and try to understand the techniques and in that video I have presented quite a lot about uh, the operation of HPLC so now it is the land to lab that has been shown to you earlier now it is a lab to land exercise wherein from the laboratory we go to the fields and we discuss with the, the growers and thereafter conduct some experiments, collection of samples etc. Naturally the samples will be brought back into the laboratory and we will do the necessary testing. The objective of this land to lab and lab to land is to integrate a field with a laboratory. So it is a laboratory field exercise combined which is interdependent and which is quite interactive for attaining the goal of organic farming and sustainable exercises. Now I wish to mention here this is not a lecture which is going to be given now. My objective is not that but my objective is to share my experiences with you so that they may be useful somewhere. These are purely our experiences in the field and our testing methods and the results whatever we got in the past so many years of this sustainable exercise. So it may not, I cannot generalize on any particular aspect as far as the field is concerned it is only sharing of my experience and it may vary from field to field or within the same field because in a laboratory we, have, we can have a control on the experimentation with the measurements, exact measurements and exact operation of the equipment and conditions which give repeatability and reproducibility. They should give. But in a field, this is not just possible because so many factors, climatic factors and uh, the availability of water, soil and the human and human management, so many factors come into existence. Our objective is ultimately to understand what's going on in the field and do the exercise accordingly and try to attain a sustainability goal with respect to the particular field. In this particular video, I want to show you something about the insects especially the thrips. Thrips are small insects which are very small. They are yellow in color or white in color and thrips pose a very big problem because they reproduce regularly within the life cycle and uh, the reproducibility rate is also quite high. Naturally millions, millions of them will be landing on the crop and this, they can spoil the entire season. Thrips really suck the, what you call, the sap of the leaf so that the leaf becomes wilted and ultimately it leads to the death of the plant. A thrip control is very difficult and naturally so many pesticides have been used or being used for years to control the thrips. Here 
what is we are achieving is an organic way of farming wherein the chemical pesticides cannot be used and instead some extracts have to be used. I have to tell you there is a big difference between a chemical pesticide and a natural herbal extract. The first one is a, you can see in the video, I'll show in the video, a chemical pesticide almost in a very short span of time kills the insect. Very short span of time. And an organic extract. It takes a lot of time. A lot of time means it, it is five fold or uh, six fold, something like that. It, but the advantage is it slows down, slows down the insect. When the insect is slowed down, the reproducibility rate or reproduction rate becomes less. So, what happens? There is a control of the population of the insect. And here I'll show you in the video. The complete action of a natural extract. Actually, at the time of uh, presenting this video, the extract is uh, being uh, what you call standardized, and therefore I I'd like to mention this only as a natural extract because the conditions have to be standardized and the concentration has to be standardized. In any case. There are several extracts independently the growers will be using to control the thrips and they are also quite effective. It varies from grower to grower, their traditional methodology and they control the population of the insects with these natural extracts. And a very interesting observation we have seen is, that will be shown in the video too, when you spray or sprinkle, there is a big difference. When you spray what you call a pesticide, it not droplets of it will be killing it, but because of this force of the air, some of the insects will be just flying away and falling in the other fields or going elsewhere. So that means sometimes when our neighboring field, wherein organic uh, farming is not done, if they spray something, it is very likely because of the velocity of the air, some of the insects will be coming in and falling on the plants here. So that is why in the past uh, four or five videos, I have discussed about the management methods in organic farming or sustainable exercise. Both are not the same. Organic farming forms a part of sustainability and sustainable exercise. Let us not miss mistake about this. And here, what happens in the management practices with the help of the border crop, with the help of a trap crop like castor, uh, with the several other methods, pheromone traps and so on, we shall, we shall be able to control a lot of the insects falling, falling into the field where organic practices are going on. So this being the management technique. Now, you cannot avoid 100% of the insects falling into our field. Therefore, naturally, we have to use something to slow down or kill the insect. There is no other way. So to kill the insect, if we use this uh, chemical pesticides, there are so many restrictions like, you know, there are so many limits and the toxicity and so many other factors will be coming into existence. That is why most of the people are now trying to go into organic farming wherein no chemical pesticides are used. Here the natural extracts are used and they slow down as I have repeatedly been saying. And here in this video, we could take the picture of a trip. It is not only a picture we could bring the thrips into the laboratory and ultimately we could expose it to an organic extract and I'll show you the entire movement of the thrip. The video takes a little longer to see but 
from a scientist point of view every millisecond is very important and we have to keep on observing what's going on whether it is a chemical reaction or a biological reaction or uh, a thrift movement or whatever it is that's why i didn't want to really do a lot of anything you can jump over wherever uh, it's an issue of important or anything like that but still an observation in us is an observation and we should be careful and in this video we shall see that incidentally these are my experiences sometimes uh, we may not find them in the literature but i am sharing my experiences as i have told you already there are some peculiar experiences that come into existence when the laboratory and uh, the field are integrated in many cases people always say that use cow's urine to control the insects and for seed treatment and why not buffalo urine this has been traditionally cow's urine is being preferred cow dung and cow urine and i was wondering why these are preferred the cows are preferred and we have analyzed in the laboratory here cow's urine and buffalo urine and incidentally buffalo urine has been found to be contaminated mostly with escherichia coli e coli i was wondering why in case of cow's urine it's not found in what are the samples we have tested i was wondering why only in buffalo urine this e coli should be present it is a pathogen and some logic we had to apply this buffaloes always tend to go and sit in stagnated water for longer times wherein the presence of e coli salmonella and other pathogens is very calm whereas a cow is mostly kept in controlled conditions and it is washed well buffalo is also washed well but yet when they go for grazing inevitably they will be sitting in ponds or uh, some waste water muddy water and all that but normally cows are so managed they are always kept clean with clean water washing and whenever the grazing is going on as far as i could see maybe there are cases where they are also left stray but most of the cases the owner of this cows tends to go with them and uh, uh, as a part of this uh, grazing exercise for them and as a part of their nutrition he follows them and in buffalo is also are followed but yet this is what we commonly see as i said this is a logic ultimately it is not purely scientific but still what i could derive at is because of this factor this buffalo sitting in the i mean the water which is not very clean its urine must have been contaminated with e coli so friends now kindly go through this video till the end and thank you very much and please subscribe bye this is a chili crop recently sowed showing small plants along with chili castor is also planted as a trap crop castor with its large leaves attracts insects thus protecting the main crop as expected there were some thrips which have fallen and started growing on the castor leaf this picture is enlarged and therefore showing large insects but in fact these are very small insects with quick movements thrips are light yellow in color and live on the sap of the leaf they also decolorize the leaves a thrip is placed on a black cloth here 
clips have very quick movements as we can see. This is a conventional power spray used for spraying of pesticides. We noticed while the droplets fall on the leaves, some insects are killed but some fly away due to the velocity of the spray. In our trials with the natural extract, we have noticed the same phenomenon in the laboratory. All of the insects flew away. Therefore, we have applied the extract on the cloth around the thrip to see the effect of it. This is a trial with a chemical pesticide. The insect got paralyzed almost immediately, say in less than 10 seconds. This was our trial with uh, sulfur. Sulfur was sprinkled around the insect. These white patches we are seeing on the cloth are sulfur. We observed that it had little or no effect as the insect just slowed down for a while but was very much alive and slowly regained its speed later. As I have applied a natural extract around the thrip on the cloth, it started slowing down. It also stopped on the extract zone, perhaps was sucking the extract as it was a natural extract from leaves. It started slowing down further and gradually came to a stop. Incidentally, thrips can fly very weakly as their wings are unsuitable for flight in a conventional manner. Thrips have short lifespan and large capacity of reproductive cycle, so millions of eggs emerge every day when they infest the crop. No single organic extract is perhaps a solution for thrips as they develop resistance very fast and rotation of the organic extract mixture is a must. We can see now that the speed is reduced. Further, the movement also became erratic. In short, it has become lethargic. If it becomes slow, then the reproductive rate goes down and thus the population of the insects can drastically be controlled. Whereas, with chemical pesticide, the thrip got paralyzed in less than 10 seconds. This took more than 3 minutes with organic extract, as we can see.
We are working on different natural extracts for control of insects and for sustainable farming. Work on the extract presented in this video is in progress at the time of making this presentation. We are yet to work on the field level application in a limited area, the dosage and the after effects everything will have to study since it is natural it is totally non-toxic i hope to come up with more updates in the near future thank you for watching the video and please subscribe